Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Hoffman. For those of you that aren't familiar, I'm a software engineer, a security researcher, and a technical author based out of the Pacific Northwest. I wrote the book Web Application Security, Exploitation, and Countermeasures for Modern Web Applications. It teaches software engineers the fundamentals of application security and white hat pen testing. You can find it on Amazon if you're interested. Today, though, I want to do something a little bit different. I want to talk about this Twitch leak that's everywhere on the internet. What you can see in front of you is actually a screenshot from the original leaker. This is a screenshot from 4chan, and more or less you can summarize it by saying he claims that this torrent link has the entirety of Twitch TV commit history going to early beginnings. So he's talking about a Git repository or multiple. So this is source code, mobile desktop video game console Twitch clients. So these are clients that are used for streaming Twitch, various proprietary SDKs, which were later identified to include things like proprietary video compression and optimization algorithms, which Twitch has kept under wraps and uh, has kept out of the way of the public, although they may have potentially been built on top of FFmpeg, which is open source. Um, I, I don't know if those claims are true, just something I read and would be interested to see the result of that. Internal AWS services used by Twitch. So these are potentially cloud-based services that might not be available to the general public. Every other property that Twitch owns, including IGDB and CurseForge. Now, this is a really big part of the leak. What this means is even if you don't use Twitch, you might say, oh, I don't have to worry about this leak because I don't use Twitch. If you use a subsidiary or a company that was purchased by Twitch, it's still very possible that your data has been compromised in part or in whole. So this is a key thing to, to note. You might still have lost data in this breach even if you don't use Twitch. An unreleased Steam competitor from Amazon Game Studios. This was later identified as Project Code, codenamed Vapor. Twitch SOC internal red teaming tools. So this stands for Security Operations Centers. And uh, the reason this is lol is because these tools were designed to uh, help Amazon find vulnerabilities before hackers do. And it is apparent that it didn't work in this scenario. Um, so the, the leaker has a little bit of humor there. Now, onto the juicy details, creator payment reports from 2019 until now. Find out how much your streamer is really making. There's a link to the torrent. I will not link it in this video. If you're looking for that link, you'll have to find that on your own. Uh, Jeff Bezos paid $970 million for this, and we're giving it away for free. Hashtag do better Twitch. So obviously, there's the juicy details. If you Google pay spin, you can find a number of people have reposted the creator payout reports, you find out there's a handful of streamers that are making over a million dollars a year. Not a surprise. Now these these uh, payouts supposedly are only coming from memberships. They're not coming from uh, donations and sponsorships. I don't know. You can verify that on your own. That's not what I'm here to talk about. Now, you can find this leak everywhere on the web. It's on Ars Technica. It's on uh, Reddit, Twitch. And I just wanted to note that this has been verified by the Twitch team on Twitter to all be legitimate data. So first and foremost, all the data that's been leaked is legitimate. The databases most likely have real user data in them. The source code most likely is, it, it has been verified to be, to be all real. This is not a publicity stunt. So everyone's trying to give advice on the internet in regards to what you can do to improve your security, considering you may have lost data in this breach. Now, almost every website is said, saying they recommend changing your passwords immediately. I would recommend that as well. Now, unfortunately, I think one thing we need to consider is changing your password might not actually change your security posture. Well, why is that? It's because we don't yet know how this leak originated. So if the leak came from an internal employee, which I think is highly likely, that'll tell us a lot about Amazon's security posture, in particular Twitch's security posture. It'll tell us that the principle of least privilege it was not applied to employees, and employees had access to a large number of services and databases and things alike that they probably shouldn't have. Those of us in the world of application security, we talk about pr principle of least privilege a lot. The principle of least privilege, I'll look it up for you right now. The principle of least privilege is a principle that states that you should only give access to a system at the minimum level or at the least authority that is required for its necessary purpose. So if a Twitch user leaked this, that tells us that Twitch was not effective at isolating 
internal systems and technology from people that did not need access to them. And the blast radius of this leak could have been much smaller, it could have been diminished had Twitch implemented correct security mechanisms and the principle of least privilege throughout their employees. So it's highly likely that it was an employee. Now, it's also likely that there was a server somewhere, given the fact that there is a database leaked here, the Twitch database, there's a server or an S3 bucket um, that also did not apply the principle of least privilege. And somehow a hacker was able to get remote code execution on the server. I think that's the second most likely scenario. So I have a video explaining how code execution attacks work. It's called Command Injection Explained if you want to watch it. But we can look it up here too. So command injection attacks are attacks whereby an attacker is able to gain access to a system um, and inject their own code, so run their own script against that system. By doing this, they gain access to whatever privilege level the code executing on that system has. Now there's ways you can mitigate this. There's ways that you can prevent it from happening. There's also ways that you can reduce the blast radius. But in this particular scenario, given all of the data that was leaked, if this is a remote code execution attack, it's very likely that none of these mechanisms were in place. So in the video I did a while back, um, actually it looks like it's a video that's coming out on tomorrow, but it was uh, recorded a while back. Um, I talked about shell injection. And I talked about how basically what's going on is, you know, when your client device, your browser is communicating with a web service, like in the case of Twitch, every time anything occurs here, anytime you click on a link, for example, I click on Destiny 2, what the browser is doing is initiating HTTP request. Maybe it's initiating some socket requests. These are network requests. And it's sending data from the client to the server. In some cases, the data that's sent to the server is used to create scripts that execute in order to perform function functionality. One example of this would be video compression. You you might be able to choose on a service that has you know video hosting some parameters that go into the way in which your video is encoded. Now if the developers allow those parameters as is, so they just accept them from the client, or they don't sanitize them correctly, they don't have a sufficient whitelisting approach. It's possible for a client to execute commands that the developer not, did not intend. So when we're talking about code injection, we're essentially talking about legitimate functionality in a web application that allows a web application to work, not securely coded, and because of that, a hacker or a malicious actor, or even sometimes accidentally, commands from a user can be executed against the server. So I think that's the second most likely scenario whereby all of this data was acquired. Now, there's a number of other ways it could be. It could be there's a giant backup S3 bucket that's used internally, and the S3 bucket had its permission switched off for a short period of time, and then someone was scanning the S3 buckets for permission changes. So there's, there's, a, lot of, there's a lot of options, but I think those two are the most probable. Regardless of which one of these occurred, it's very apparent that Twitch does not apply the principle of least privilege, you know, as far as their blue teams go, or they're not capable of applying it at scale. Maybe they have too many engineers and they don't have enough people working on improving the security posture of the company. Typically, when you have a compromised web server, so you're, you, you have this command execution occur, first thing that should happen is the service that's executing commands against the terminal or is executing commands against you know any other command line interface should have some type of process isolation occur to prevent it from to prevent the attack radius from scaling to the entire server to all the data on the server or even in this case scaling beyond the server that didn't happen the next thing that should happen is you know the whole server is compromised but the systems outside of the server shouldn't be compromised that didn't happen the next thing that should happen is the server is compromised you know, the GitHub repository is compromised, but because, you know, the way in which the business organizes their source code makes sense from a security perspective, we should be seeing that the source code of Twitch maybe has been compromised, not the source code of 
Twitch and all of its subsidiaries. And obviously that didn't happen. So what we're seeing here is, of course, a breach that could be from a user. It could be from an internal employee. It could also be from some type of remote code execution. It could be from some script gone awry. It could be from an S3 repository with the wrong permissions that was backing up literally everything. I don't know. But in any of these scenarios, what we did learn is that Twitch's security posture could definitely be improved. Now, as a user, you have data that's been leaked. So we jump over here and we, we note that the leak includes things like obviously the technology and the source code, but it also includes databases, which supposedly include encrypted passwords. And if they include encrypted passwords, that also probably means they include some references to your payment information. They include some references to potentially your uh, data associated with the payment information like addresses. There's a high likelihood that your name is in there. There's a very high likelihood that your email is in there. Other account identifiers. It's very, very probable that given this type of data is leaked, uh, it probably expands beyond that to include things like your Twitch comments, um, the things you subscribe to on Twitch, the donations you've made. So logs of those that would be in a database or even on the file system. So you can assume that any interaction that you've had with Twitch or a subsidiary, any data you provide to those services, probably has been compromised and is on the web. So that's unfortunate. There is some benefit to this. Um, it notes that the passwords are encrypted. By this, it means hashed, I believe. Um, and, and what's that saying is, you know, there's probably no plain text passwords. So there's a, there's a very small likelihood that someone's going to be logging into your account performing operations on behalf of you. Now, that doesn't mean that your account is secure. So enabling two-factor authentication, I have another video that's coming out soon, and it talks about the five things that most users of web applications can do to improve their security posture on the web. Two-factor authentication is always a first, so I highly recommend that. So change your password, change your two-factor authentication. Another thing that I would do here just to be safe is I would go through any services that use the same email that you signed up with on Twitch. And I would actually suggest making sure that those have 2FA and that those services, just in case, um, have their passwords changed. Now, the reason why is because we know we have these hashed passwords, but we don't know, at least yet, and I'm sure this will be data mined, you know, the methods by which Twitch is hashing these passwords, the algorithms they're using. We also don't know things like their logging. A lot of times you have a, you know, you have your passwords are hashed in the database and that's fine. But then you use services like you might use Datadog, for example. You might use Snowflake for backups. You might use proprietary internal Amazon technology for all of these things. And it's very easy to log a password by accident. Um, you know, a developer writing a system logs the data that gets sent over the network. Boom. Uh, it throws some passwords in a log. Now, these passwords aren't encrypted. They're not hashed. So, uh, you know, if it turns out that any of the log files on this system include plain text passwords, all the other websites that you have access to that use the same email, assuming that you were doing password stuffing, which is a bad practice, they'll be compromised. So, you know, my advice right off the bat would be change your password, enable 2FA, go to every other web service that you have access to where you use the same email, change your passwords on those, and you know, use implement 2FA, especially if you use the same passwords across multiple services and stop doing that. And, you know, beyond that, there's not too much that you can do. I would monitor your credit cards. I would monitor any payment methods you had attached to Twitch because that's going to be some attack surface area that if it turns out, um, you know, Twitch was slacking on their PCI compliance, if it turns out that there's some tokens that haven't expired yet, there's a lot of users that might start seeing fraudulent charges. So this is my advice for now, and this is kind of my overview of the situation. I'm going to dig more deeply into the details, and if I find anything that's really interesting or any advice that I can give that I think will you know, really help uh, improve the security posture of people affected by this leak, I will definitely give it out. But for now, I'm going to call the video, and uh, I wish you guys the best of luck, and stay safe.